Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, I hope everybody is safe and well. The worst of the, uh, of the panic buying at the grocery store is over, I think, I hope. But we're still going to do recipes that use stuff in your pantry. And I think that everybody probably at this point needs some cookies. So today we're gonna try something new for me that I've never made before, using some ingredients that I've never made before but I happen to have in the house. Into the stand mixer I have put some butter and I'm gonna put in some candy sugar and we're gonna cream that together. And I'll tell you what the candy sugar is in a moment. Okay, so this is candy sugar. And I know that we're calling this stuff in my pantry or stuff that I have in my cupboard. I don't expect a lot of you have candy sugar. Um, if you brew beer, you probably know what this is. It's just white sugar that I've put into a glass baking dish stuck in the oven at a low temperature for four or five hours, stirred it every once in a while and it caramelizes, but it doesn't fully melt. So there's still some sugar structure there. And what you do with that is you've added some caramel flavor. And I think the caramel flavor in this cookie is going to work really well. If you don't have it, that's fine. Uh, use brown sugar or just use straight white sugar. And if you're interested in how to make it and you want me to make a video, let me know in the comments section and I'll put one of those out. So this is a spice cookie. It's a riff on a Biscoff or a Speculus. So next in we have cinnamon. Uh, I've got a mix of clove and allspice because those were in my cupboard. Uh, you could use any of the warming spices that you want. You could put in nutmeg, you could put in mace, you could put in cardamom. All of those flavors would work in this cookie. I'm also going to put in salt at this point and the baking soda. I'm also going to crack in an egg and let that come all together. Okay, that's come together really nicely. So the next thing in is flour. And this is all-purpose flour. That's all you need to use. I happen to have a little bit of tapioca starch uh, in the cupboard because we used it in a cookie recipe about a month ago. And I really liked the texture that it brought to the cookie and I think it'll work really well in this cookie. So I'm gonna put that in, just a tablespoon. You don't need to use it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just add an extra tablespoon of flour. Um, so. With the mixer still running, we're just gonna spoon this in and you don't have to be too delicate with it. I don't think you can just put it in really quickly and you just mix it in until it's fully incorporated. Okay, I think we're good. Um, I understand you're looking for a texture that's kind of like a uh, gingerbread because we're gonna roll it out. So let's get it out onto a floured surface and see what happens. A little bit of flour on the countertop. And, okay, a rolling pin, and we just want to roll this out to, I don't know, a little less than a quarter inch, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. Split the difference, I guess. And make sure your countertop is floured. You don't want it to stick to the counter. And don't be afraid to move it around. Um, the dough is quite forgiving, I think. It is quite nice. And I'm trying to keep it a rectangle if I can. No, nope, got a hole. It'd be okay. Okay, mostly a rectangle. Um, as close to a rectangle as I'm going to get. Now if you have cookie cutters and you want to use cookie cutters, this is a great place to use them. If you don't have cookie cutters, a pizza wheel I think will do the job. And if you don't have a pizza wheel, just a knife. So I'm going to cut these into rectangles. Um, See what happens. Okay, so I'm not doing such a great job of a consistent size, but I think it'll be okay. And you can hear the crunch, a little bit of the crunch as the pizza wheel goes through the sugar. Um, that candy sugar still has uh, some bigger bits, which I'm hoping are gonna melt nicely into the cookie. So. Use a spatula, pick them up, put them onto a baking tray. These will go into a preheated oven for 14 to 16 minutes and we'll see what happens. Hi. Hi friends, hi Glenn. Cookies. cookies. So a cookie test. Um, not, a not a traditional cookie by any means. Um, 
testing out different ideas around the idea of, of a specula or a, a but great crisp. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, those are nice flavor. I like these. Mm -hmm. I bet they're really good for dunking tea. Mm hmm. Mm. Now, the spice flavor is pretty mild. Mm hmm. You get up the cinnamon. You get up the other flavors. I also really like it mild, though. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having a cookie that's just lovely. Yeah. It doesn't have to hit you. Now, obviously, I should have used a cookie cutter. <laughs> I should have. No. I should have used a cookie cutter. I like the rectangle um, shapes. Or spent more time <clears throat> making sure that the rectangles were nice. At the same time, what's the value to that? Uh, to me, there's no value to that, especially since I'm just testing it. This is the first time I've made this recipe. I'm testing a recipe. I just want to, I really am more interested in how it- Is it crispy? Is it crispy? Does it taste okay? Yeah. Is it all those Did things? Did it come together properly? Did I burn it? No. Yeah. All is good. So it's an easy, nice project for you to work on. Uses stuff that's probably in your cupboard. Take your mind off everything for a little while, and then you get to sit down on the couch and have cookies. So, thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.